Good morning guys, we are pulling into the Jeep dealership, gonna get ourselves some OEM Jeep parts to do a Jeep project, so uh, gonna go in, try not to spend too much money, <laughs> you never know, we'll see how it goes. Holy crap guys, $77.50 for a PCV valve, are you kidding? Uh, we still have one more stop to go, at least it won't be a rip off like the dealership. <laughs> okay. Here we are pulling into Advance Auto. Uh, always get hooked up here, so we're gonna pull in. Oh, jeez. Not the driveway. Up and over. <laughs> Carbon it. Jeep life, baby. <laughs> Alright, let's get in here. Alright, there it is. We got ourselves some hose and we got some hose clamps. Uh, ain't nothing like spending a trillion dollars on an OEM part from the dealership. So, let's get it home and we'll do this project. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome back to the project. Today it is beautiful out and it is a perfect day to check the progress of the Commander Catch Can. It's also perfect because, where is it? We are just shy of the 500 mile mark. It's about 460 miles we put on this thing since we did the old Catch Can, so we're gonna see how much the Catch Can caught. How much oil can a Catch Can catch when a Catch Can can catch oil? Woo hoo hoo! So, um, while we're doing that, we're also going to get in there, we're going to re-plumb the lines. I'm going to add this hose with uh, hose clamps instead of those barbs, which is damn near impossible to remove once you stick it on. So we're going to do that, and we also got a brand new PCV valve. So we're going to pop the hood and get in there. All right, guys, here we go. First thing I'm gonna do is check the level of the catch can. I've been dying to see how much it accumulated, so I already removed the resonator box and the air filter cover. You guys don't need to see that, it's really easy stuff. And I'm just gonna reach down in here, get this catch can off. Now, it has been 465 miles. I did the math, I was really close on my guesstimation. Very good guesser. And here it is. Here we go. Check it out. Let's go see. All right, guys, here we go. Look at that. 465 miles of catch can catchings. We're going to round this up to 500 miles. And, well, good thing it's a four ounce can because it could probably contain a whole oil change worth. So if we go 500 miles, we times that by six, we'll get to our 3,000 miles. And if we times this amount by six, I'm fairly confident we can not uh, max out this catch can. So let's see exactly how much it is. We got a dropper. It comes in all the uh, baby medicine, like the baby Motrin, Tylenol, all that good stuff. Just gonna remove as much as I can with this little dropper. Try not to get any air in here. Wow. There we go. That's just about, what is this? 10 milliliters, here we go. So we got 10 milliliters of oil for 500 miles, pretty good. So here we go, we got 10 milliliters per 500 miles, that's the recommended can maintenance check. So um, let's see what we could do now with this. We got 500 miles equals 10 milliliters. Uh, we're gonna have to go to 30 milliliters for one ounce. So we're gonna times this by three. So we got 1,500 miles equals one ounce. No, that's garbage. You can't read that. <laughs> 1,500 miles equals one ounce. That's better. So let's do some more math here. We got 1,500 equals one ounce. We wanna get to four ounces because in the last video we determined that this can hold about four ounces. Uh, four ounces, so we're gonna times this by four. And 15 times four, we're gonna 60. So 6,000 miles. So we are gonna extrapolate that 6,000 miles worth of oil can fit in this here catch can. Now that's more than enough considering I change my oil religiously about every 3,000 miles. So this is fantastic. It's definitely more than enough volume in this can per oil change. I think we are good to go. All right, we got a catch can back on the vehicle. The next time we service this thing, it's gonna be at our oil change, which is gonna be in about 2,500 miles. And hopefully at that time, we have about less than half this catch can full. Um, again, if we do the numbers, we're gonna get about 
two ounces of fluid, half a catch can, every 3,000 miles we run this thing. Now, if you think about that number, guys, if you run this thing over the course of its lifetime, which this has 90,000 miles on it, um, that's about a half a gallon worth of nasty, watery, oily blow-by getting circulated back into your intake. That's crazy. If you take a half a gallon worth of oily water and you dump it into this intake, you will kill the engine. Um, why we have this run this way, I don't know. Um, it's unacceptable to me that we can kill our engine slowly through the course of time. <laughs> Not happening anymore. We're going to keep running this catch can. We're going to keep all that junk out of this intake, run it clean, and prolong the life of this engine. And uh, our next step is going to be uh, taking these catch can collars. Uh, I don't like them. Uh, it's damn near impossible to take these hoses off. I'm going to cut these off. I'm going to put new hoses on with hose clamps. So here we go. All right, now I'm gonna get this end off this PVC valve, and this is something I don't really care to do, but I'm gonna cut this OEM hose so I could get one, uh, one hose from the catch can to this PVC valve instead of uh, this here plastic part and then this here hose. So I'm gonna cut it, and uh, we're gonna make a nice clean connection. So I'm gonna gently score this hose off this barb and try to separate it. There we go. Genuine Mopar, part number 5303-2940AB. All right, guys, now that we got the hose out of the way, we're going to go ahead and change this PCV valve. Uh, with the PCV valve we got from the Steeler ship this morning. Now, in all honesty, guys, we probably should have replaced this PCV valve when we first did the catch can, just so we get uh, better accuracy of the uh, flow. Um, if I put in a new one, I'm just guessing that we're going to get probably more, I would say, more blow-by caught, uh, because over time, these uh, PCV valves get a little gummed up. So... Just gonna keep this uh, spinning out. There we go. And here it is. All right, this one's still good. You could hear the little valve in there moving around, so it's not officially gummed up, but we're gonna put in a new one. All right, and here is our genuine Mopar PCV valve we got this morning. And we're just gonna spin it right on. And we're gonna snug it down with these here channel locks. Cool, good to go. All right guys, now we're gonna plumb our PCV line with the half inch heater hose I got this morning at the auto parts store, another victory. And the half inch line slides right onto the PCV valve, no problem. And of course, we're gonna go out the PCV valve into the catch can, which is over here. And I'm going to put it under here and leave myself plenty of room in case uh, I have to cut uh, later. I don't know. You never know. More is better. That should be good. And I'm going to run some hose clamps. I'm going to do it the good old way instead of uh, <laughs> instead of those fittings that uh, I can never undo, which that was a pain in the butt to me. There we go. Eight millimeter nut driver, in for the win. <laughs> All right, let's get this one up here. All right, for the second hose, I'm gonna reuse this factory elbow right here. That's gonna slide on right there. But first, I'm gonna slide on. I gotta go with this thing again, this barb fitting. This actually did work nice in this area. So, you know what, I'll put this on first. Nice tight barb fitting. There we go. Hey, and you know what? Since this factory elbow and this hose is just about the same diameter, and they both fit nice and snugly on that little barb, we are going to go ahead and share a hose clamp. Should clean it up a little bit, make things simple. It's nice and wide too, so it's going to go right on the center. 
sharing. Sharing, it's a rule now. Cool. And here we go. A loose clamp over here. There we go. And you just want to make sure you align your hose clamps so you can access them. All right, that's smart enough. All right, there we go, guys. We got a catch can nice and cleaned out. We got a brand new PCV valve, and we got our whole system plumbed up with new hoses, half inch hoses, and hose clamps. So we're good to go. All we got to do next is just check the level of the oil, and then we can clean this thing up. There we go, guys. 500 miles later, still right in the middle, nice and clean. Cool. We will revisit this thing in another 2,500 miles. Good to go. All right, guys, that's a wrap for my oil catch can follow-up video. So today we learned that after 500 miles, this thing can accumulate about 10 milliliters worth of oily, watery blow-by. Now if you do the math, it comes out to about two ounces of blow-by every 3,000 miles, and that's your standard oil change. Um, the craziest part is that after 90,000 miles, which is what we have on this Commander, that can add up to a half a gallon of blow-by that's getting dumped back into the intake of this vehicle. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd be pretty pissed if I got a Jeep with 100,000 miles on it and someone came along and dumped a half a gallon of fluid into my intake. You'd kill the engine and uh, wouldn't make me very happy at all. So I'm not happy about my vehicles getting that blow bite dumped in. I know it's a small amount over time, but still, it can't be good for it. So I'm a believer in these catch cans. I'm gonna run a catch can in all my vehicles. Uh, probably not gonna film it, but um, I'm gonna do it. So uh, this one is a Ram catch can that I used in the Hemi. I retrofitted it. Go check out that video. And uh, that's going to be all for this one. So like and subscribe. Get some Project Dan H stickers. And I will see you on the next project. Peace. Here we go, guys. <laughs> yeah, Hemi. <laughs>